So what's the weather like, Bev? <laughs> oh dear me, the weather. Oh dear. Right, well, busy. we're glad that we filmed the bulk of this yesterday, because today looks like this. And it's not really a good day for being outside. So we're sort of having to sort of like back to the future this, you know, we're having to do this now, then go back to the past for what we did and then come back to the future again to explain more bits. But hey, crazy's good. So one of the things that was just bugging me is, um, as you know, we've done the anchor and we've done some cleaning and things, but I just felt like we hadn't finished jobs. And Oh God, no, the book was filthy. I mean... The state of some of the we cleaned some of the lines. We took them to the laundromat. We've done that. Done that. Other lines were still filthy, <laughs> and uh, even though I had done a clean, if there was degrees of ming, sort of like the ones we did yesterday had this much mingness to them. Yeah, and the ones that we did last week had this much ming to them. But um, I just feel loads. like yeah. um, so. I've cleaned the boat. I've cleaned the boat again, and I can tell you now. It still, still needs to do it again claim. because there's bits that I have missed. But the thing is, uh, with doing all that, we just thought we were, and also there was jobs. I just had jobs that I needed finishing. jobs I've got to do today is uh, put on my three braid splice onto my bitter end of my chain um, because it just needs doing but to do that the one essential tool that I need is the hollow fid um, on top of that I've also got some marlo tape uh, because um, once I've split this up I just put a bit of marlo tape around the ends so that they don't fray how long has it been since you've done a three braid splice just asking. Quite a while, but it's a good thing I've got a, uh, a, a YouTube video, <laughs> which I'll put a link to in the description. <laughs> and just up there, that I can watch, just so that I can remember how the heck to do it. Now, the reason I'm uh, using um, this three braid splice is that I need everything to go through the holes hole. If I put um, just put a knot, um, that can be quite bulky. Also, it might break, whereas what you need to have is you need something that is guaranteed and a splice. Um, I know that my splice will work. But while we were doing all this rope related stuff, something sort of came to mind. Uh, well, not really came to mind, sort of intruded upon us because we were having difficulty with some areas of it. And that is sometimes with ropes, if they've been sitting for a long time and they've had a lot of strain on bits of them, the knots can be a devil to get out, can't they? They can. It's our opinion that it's not really one of the essential tools, but I think if you're on a sailboat, a thing like this with a lot of ropes, it's a good idea to have a splicing kit. It certainly is. Because the splicing kit's for more than just splicing, isn't it? But in the splicing kit, there is some equipment that is absolutely essential. So one of my crimes is that the um, whipping on this line is actually too long and it actually makes the, the end stiff and difficult to get round a pulley so I'm going to take it off and redo it. It's not a big deal. You need two more of the essentials that we keep on board. This fed which you can use to break knots because the um, the line can go up the inside of this and you can use it to tease a knot apart when a rope has been built very very hard and has gone tight. And the other thing which we consider very much an essential is whipping line. And if there's, if you're going to start having a splicing bag and things like that, the two essentials to start with in our opinion is a fid and some decent whipping twine. These are UV resistant so they don't get damaged by weather and these are so useful for breaking apart seized knots. These are invaluable things <laughs> and whenever we eventually drop them over the side, as we do from time to time, we immediately go and buy another one. Um, 
I think we have a spare on board at the minute. I'm not too sure, but if we don't, we'll go and buy a spare because these are just so useful to have. So my job now is to get this re-whipped on a shorter whipping. It's just a common whipping. And um, then I'll get this reloaded back into the, G the Jenny car pulleys and that job is out of the way. This is a hangover from last week's job. We just didn't get it finished because of time and weather and, and whatnot. I think it ran out of daylight, actually. But now the clocks have gone forward. Ooh. And we got an extra hour of daylight and an hour less of rain. Um, I'm just going to get this done. So, um, another um, item that should be in your splicing kit, which is not, it's more to do with sales. If you have to do anything with sales or sewing, then you will need your palm, your needles and twine, obviously. And um, it doesn't harm to have some scissors and... Um, I think that's about it really but they are if you're going to do any sale work or even sewing of any sort yeah i mean you do the sewing in this book but i can say from watching you that seal cloth is not the sort of thing you stick a normal needle through if you take a normal needle and stick it into seal cloth it'll bend over like paper clip yeah so you need decent needles and um you also need uh, pointy nose <laughs> pliers Decent needle. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually you, my darning needle, Beverly. You, you threaten people to get out of the way from me. <laughs> Don't point that thing at me. That's one of my darning needles. I've got quite a few different needles. Officer, I'm being assaulted. So I've taken the uh, side panel off because it needs repair, as does the other one, but Gainer's working on that side of the boat at the minute. So as you can see, this uh, fid is very useful for getting into all those tight little knots. Over time, the paracord, this stuff here, can get very, very tight and difficult to untie. Um, its principal purpose is to take the uh, guardrail line, which in our case is Dyneema, um, and tension it up and make it nice and tight. Uh, that keeps the guardrails nice and straight, but it also means that if you do have to get rid of the guardrail in a hurry, say to bring somebody on board after a casualty incident, you can get a knife and simply cut through this stuff and the guardrails off. Probably make a terrible mess and everything go everywhere, but different matter. If you need the guardrails down, that's the quick way to do it. The other thing is that uh, we've been using this Dyneema for a few years. It seems to be holding up very, very well. It's probably getting the time we'll have to think about replacing it, but for now it seems to be in good order. And... Um, one of the things that we found about Dyneema was that this thing tends to get flabby and a bit, and you think to yourself, well, it's not supposed to stretch. But apparently Dyneema does stretch. When it gets warm, it lengthens a bit. When it gets cold, it contracts a bit. So Dyneema changes length depending on the temperature, which is not something we had appreciated. Um, I guess it brings a whole new level of horror to anybody using Dyneema for rigging because it means you've got to constantly be tensioning and retensioning and untensioning your rig. It sounds like a lot of grief. I mean, it's probably bad enough having steel, but having this stuff, bleh, not for me. One of the other jobs I'm going to do in just a minute is I'm going to pull this stanchion behind me. Because when we were in Southern Ireland, somebody grabbed hold of this really hard and gave it a hell of a pull. And we think it's actually broken. But we need to take the guardrails off to inspect it, so that's what we're going to do now. Okay. Well, on first inspection, there's good news and there's bad news. The stanchion damage was done by somebody who... Um, basically bent the stanching while we were manoeuvring close to a pontoon. Uh, 
basically it's a good reason why you do not grab a boat stanchions and pull yourself up or pull the boat along or anything like that. If you want to move the boat, take the line that somebody has passed to you and pull the boat with the line. Do not grab the guard lines, do not grab the stanchions, because if you do, you get a situation like what we have. The stanchion itself is not bent, which is a big relief because it's £100 for a new stanchion. However, the stanchion base has now got cracks. So it will probably have to be replaced and I've got no idea how much that's going to cost. I've checked other ones. They don't have these fatigue cracks or cracks in the bottom of them. But this one does. The one that was pulled hard. So when you go around pulling people's stanchions, just bear in mind that if you manage to do a really good job, you're inflicting a bill of 100 quid a time. Please don't do it. Um, one thing that we didn't cover in the, um, yesterday because we didn't need them. These things. These are also called needles. <laughs> these are our really big needles. These are really big needles. Um, and these are also a type of fin. Now we made these ourselves out of brass tube. But these are principally used for... Dyneema splicing. And braid on braid. Mm. Yeah. So, um, but we've used these for Dyneema splicing. Um, which obviously we've got on the guardrails. We have. Our guardrails are Dyneema. And when we did them, we used these. But that's where you run out of things to say about them. <laughs> we bought a splicing kit. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can buy these things in a Chandler's. We can. And we did. And we bought a splicing kit. And it came with these, but it didn't come with these. Um, it came with a palm. It came with some whipping twine. And it came with the, uh, the, ho the hollow fid. This thing here with the big big hollow in it. And um, I think that was basically the... Take that out because that And that. I think sort of like this and a bit of tape. Oh, was, was that it, is absolutely essential. I think that was basically the basic splicing kit that we bought. Apart from the fact it did have some extra needles. But these are flats. Oh, not that one. It's the flats. This one. These oh, ones. yes. They those ones. They, they came in it. And... Um, it also came with, so I think this lot, don't touch that one down there. Yeah. So I think this is what we basically got on our on our splicing kit. We got the, fit, the hollow fade, palm, needles, twine, bit of tape, and two braid on braid, push through the ropes kind of style needles. Mm. And this was not particularly expensive. No, I mean, say, so, yeah, but that's one of the reasons that we think it has got to be on your boat. Because like Beverly says, if you're doing anything with ropes, this, you want this. This is the god tool when it comes to ropes. It certainly is. It definitely is. So the only other pieces of equipment that I think are very useful are pointy nose pliers uh, so that you can uh, pull needles through. Um, That's true. Pushing them through is difficult enough. Pulling them through is nearly impossible. Yeah. And a burner of some sort, just so that if you've got nylon ropes, they can be uh, burnt and... Um, Try not to melt a hole in your seal. That would be, <laughs> that would be bad. That would be bad there. But for me, the one and only big thing I need is glasses. <laughs> Decent glasses. <laughs> I was only saying that for a laugh. He actually meant it. Of course I did. <laughs> If you're not blind like Gator, then you won't need the glasses. <laughs> but for me, it's essential. Oh, God. What's in that coffee? <laughs> <laughs>